Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be checking out substrate materials, more specifically the substrate content examples. In the content examples project, this recently got updated to Unreal Engine 5.2. There's tons of different examples of substrate materials, including the opal material that we saw in the Unreal Engine 5.2 truck demo. Now, if you don't know what substrate is, substrate is a new experimental material framework and it is set to change the way that we set up materials inside of Unreal Engine 5. The main difference between Substrate and what we currently have is that with Substrate, it is possible to create layered materials with different shading models to create highly realistic materials that were previously impossible to create with the legacy material systems. So for example, here's a material inside of Unreal Engine 5.1 using you know, the legacy material system versus Unreal Engine 5.2 using the new substrate material system. So obviously you can see there is clear distinction between the two materials and that is because with substrate you can use multiple different shading models per each layer rather than combining all of the layers and just using one shading model. So in this video we're going to be checking out the content examples project that showcases some of the next gen materials that you can create with substrate. Uh, there are plenty of different examples in here including the open material. They have it up for grabs so you can dissect the material and see how they created it along with some of the other examples. Now before we jump into the video, I want to quickly tell you about my Unreal Engine 5 multiplayer survival game course. There is over 40 hours of course content. In this course, you will learn how to make things like a drag and drop inventory system, a complete crafting system where you can craft all sorts of different items, a harvesting system where you can chop down any tree rock or bush that you see on the map. We create nine unique weapons and tools, things like a rocket launcher, pickaxe, hatchet, rifle. We create an entire building system where you can build your own bases using foundations, walls, ceilings, and you can upgrade your base from wood to then stone and then to metal. This course is currently in early access, but if you enroll today, you'll get a big early access discount. The price of this course will be raised later on, but if you enroll now, you'll get access to the entire course and all future lectures that will be added. So take your game development skills to the next level by enrolling in this course. The link will be in the description below, or you can head over to smartpoly.teachable.com to check out the course. By the way, you can also check out this same project and download it for free. All you have to do is head over to the samples on the Epic Games Launcher, and over here on the content examples, just click on that and click Create Project or Unreal Engine 5.2 and then once you open up the project you'll have you know all the different maps that have all the different content examples you want to go ahead and open up the substrate materials map and then you also want to go to your project settings search for a substrate and you want to go ahead and enable substrate materials because by default it is not enabled. Otherwise, all the materials in here are just going to look black. So you just want to make sure that you enable substrate in the project settings and restart your project. Okay, so here we are inside of the content examples. Basically, we have you know some of the limitations of the legacy materials. So again, you can't have more than one shading model, such as you know default lit, clear coat, and also with metallic and specular, you have sort of a limitation when you blend both of those together. So as you can see, some of the different examples of limitations here. Now over here, we have some examples of different materials that have been automatically converted from the legacy material system to substrate. So what this means is when you convert all your Unreal Engine projects, it will automatically convert the materials to use substrate. So all this does is it uses this little node, substrate legacy conversion, and you can see that we have all the basic inputs that you're familiar with, you know, base color, metallic, specular, all that stuff. Now over here we have layering and mixing. So this showcases the layering system of substrate. So you can see we have material A, which is this nice sort of gold textured material. And then layer B, which is sort of this bumpy surface. And then layer B on A, you can see the combination of the bumpy surface, which is the layer below that golden material. And then we have a mix of A and B. So you can see 
that it's you know masked on top. When assembling an appearance substrate offers several methods for compositing them. You know, you have vertical layering, horizontal mixing, weighting, and adding. These operations used will ultimately define the material topology and thus its look. Vertical layering uses the mean free path or MFP and the thickness of the coating layer determine the color and visibility of the underlying layers. Horizontal mixing uses a blend weight to determine the mix between the evaluated result of the two inputs. So it's kind of interesting to see how they how they have combined, you know, both of these materials together. And all of these examples, of course, you can browse to the materials themselves and open them up, see how exactly they have created it. So the iridescence is a wave optical phenomenon caused when light reflects off different layers of film, resulting in the emergence or constructive slash destructive interference pattern. This pattern shows up in a number of material appearances from oil on water and soap films. So for example, sort of like bubbles, to oxide coatings on metals, to structural coloration. So this is one of the new features of substrate materials. So you can see those little bubbles that you see here on this translucent surface. That is basically the iridescence, okay? And then we have iridescence on metal. So you can see on the very edges, we're getting that same sort of look. You also see this on you know oily surfaces. Like if you see oil on water, you'll see the same sort of appearance on those type of surfaces. Over here we have domain materials, post-process materials, light functions, and decals are all considered to be domain materials. When using strata or substrate, any material graph can be used as a decal. To ensure that the appearance is interpolated correctly, the convert to decal node must be inserted to the graph before attaching the pin to the front material input. So I guess this is just a little difference when you set up decals using substrate. Monolithic material BSDF. So these materials are meant to be used in isolation. They represent complex phenomena for which the concept of material mixing is either nonsensical or is otherwise constrained by performance. So we have things like volumetrics, hair and eye material, unlit and single water shading models are all considered to be monolithic and will not respond to the substrate blending operators. So for example, this eye material, I guess you have to use the BSDF node and you can't blend multiple layers with that. Okay, substrate slab. So the slab is the elementary building block of which one assembles a substrate material. It's designed for the minimum necessary struct, which the vast majority of material appearances can be achieved. In the case of opaque materials, when a slab is at the bottom of a material topology, it will be considered for subsurface scattering. Any slab not at the bottom of an opaque material or when used in translucent material will be considered for a volumetric representation. So the materials below demonstrate some of the uses of the more expressive nature of substrate for authoring more artistically driven looks. So flip-flop flakes, this is kind of a cool design. We have a chromatic specular. And we have this oiled leather seat. The very high detailed, as you can see. Now we're gonna skip through a couple of these content examples because it gets a little bit more technical showing off some of the different nodes and or inputs. So I just recommend checking out this example project where you can read along. I just don't want this video to be over an hour long. So you guys can check out the project, link in the description below. But we're gonna skip through some of these and show off some of the advanced substrate examples. Okay, so lastly here we have some advanced uses of substrate. So we have sort of this dusty carbon fiber material. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but right here on the top, you can see sort of the dirt layer. So this is kind of a cool material here. We have this green layer and you can see it, you know, distorts the reflections on the top. And if I go down here, we have just a normal layered material. You can see it has a nice little pattern underneath. And over here we have wet sand with water. So there's a little bit of blending here and you can kind of see the transition between, you know, the water coating over the sand, which is pretty interesting because you can see it slowly dry out. And I think this would be a pretty cool material to check out how they've designed it because maybe this would be a really good use for, you know, on landscapes or something like that. Okay, so next up we have ice and rocks. So this is a pretty cool material. You have sort of this 3D effect. We have this outer coating of ice and then underneath it we have rocks. So it gives sort of an illusion that there is an actual 3D model, but if I pan the camera close, you can see that you can see that this is just a material. It's not any mesh or anything being rendered in the back there. 
So another neat example of what is possible with layering materials. Then of course we have this opal material, which we all saw when they showcase the 5.2 demo. So we can go ahead and check out the actual material graph. So there's quite a bit of stuff that's going on here, as you can see. So yeah, it's kind of neat that they included this material because I tried recreating it in another video, but I just wasn't able to. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I might make a follow-up video taking some of the materials from this project and just applying it to you know various different meshes or something like that as always let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below and yeah that's pretty much it see you guys in the next video